NFL fans, it is now time, of course, for the divisional round of the National Football League playoffs. And, of course, we got a lot to look over and a lot to break down of how we got here. And for the NFL Wild Card Super Weekend, uh, there was a lot of games and there was a lot of blowouts. Uh, In my honest opinion, I think the Wild Card this year uh, was underperformed, understacked, and overhyped. On that, I can give you a few reasons. Uh, You had one, two, three, four, five technically blowouts throughout that whole uh, weekend. Texans and Browns. Texans came out and showed out and done what they did. Uh, They intercepted Joe Flacco for two pick sixes. Uh, and the score was 45 to 14. That's how they have moved on to the divisional round to play the Ravens. Congratulations to CJ Shroud and that whole team. Nico Collins, Devin Singletary. They done their thing. They showed up. They performed at top tier level. Not taking that away from them. The Chiefs did the absolute same thing to the Dolphins. In negative degree weather. Uh, But it was a blowout as well. I think the cold really messed with a lot of the players that came up from Miami. Even though they said it wasn't bothering them. It was a mindset. Uh, That one was a three score game as well. The Packers blew the Cowboys out of the water. All the way up until the fourth quarter. Dak got a couple scores in. It was a three point game majority of that game the buffalo bills played the Steelers on monday and that game as well was a blowout it was a three-point game as well the buccaneers 32 to 9 over the eagles on monday night that was a over three-point position game as well uh so a lot of these games was going to be uh, the Texans and Browns, you know, it was a who got the better trade deal. The Chiefs and Dolphins was Tyreek came back. Can he make a big difference? The Packers and Cowboys, the Packers have been undefeated since last season at home. Or the, the Cowboys have been undefeated at home. Since last season. So that was a big thing for them coming into this. And they lost. Blew out. Of course the Bills. They did what Bills Mafia does. The Buccaneers shown that. They're not an under. You know an underdeveloped team. That they're not the weakest link. uh, And blew the Eagles out. Who have had a lot of issues. Out of the last seven games. They've won one. The only game that was competitive. In our opinion. And came down to the last play was the Rams and the Lions. And round of applause to Dan Campbell and that Lions team. 24-23 over the Rams to go to the divisional round. First time in 30 plus years. That is huge for that team. Uh, So with that being said, I hope the divisional round as we go into it here is going to have a lot more to look forward to, that there is a lot more competitive nature to the gameplay. I'm also hoping that we don't see as many um, technical blowouts. Uh, the games that I see coming down to a few possessions uh, and seeing that it actually be a one-score game decides it, Chiefs and Bills, them two are always very competitive. Uh, There's a lot of history there as well. Uh, The Buccaneers and Lions, I can see that one coming down to a touchdown or a field goal um, and deciding who wins that one. It goes on to the championship game. And then also, I'm going to hit it out the park here again with a wild one. I'm going to say the Packers and the 49ers is another close game as well. I think the Packers are really underestimated by the whole NFL at this point, And I do believe they're going to come out 
show out and, you know, do what they do and have a close game with the 49ers. With that being said, let's jump right into the live predictions of the divisional round for y'all. Of course, as always, hit that like, share with your football friends and family, and then smack that subscribe button. Become part of the community. We're going to keep up with everything in the offseason football-wise, and we're also adding a few more aspects for it that you might be interested in. So always hit the bell. That way you get notified of when we do post our football content. First game of the divisional round is brought to you by the Baltimore Ravens and Houston Texans live on ESPN at 4.30 p.m. This game is a rematch from week one. The Ravens won that game 9-25. to And if you look at the match stats for this game, of course, the, the stats were kind of even across the board. You got even first downs. Uh, total yards, the Texans had more. Passing yards, Texans. Russian, Ravens. Penalties, Ravens. Um, total return yards, Texans. Plays were Texans. Uh, plays for yards were Ravens. And turnovers, that's what hurt the Texans. Uh, time of possession was about the same as well. So on paper, it's an evenly matched game from week one. Now, has the teams built on what they had and gotten stronger? Absolutely. Uh, is this one in Baltimore as well? Absolutely. So the the, the game hasn't changed where it's going to be at, who's going to be where. It's all about who shows up Saturday. Is that red-hot Texan team going to show up to go up against a red-hot Ravens team, or is Texans going to take the day off and Ravens get the easy win? Or the Texans going to show up and the Ravens overlook them and get mollywhopped just like the Browns did? We don't know. But, of course, that's the whole nature of the playoffs. With that being said, I am going to take the underdog here. I do believe they are a uh, Ravens or a minus nine. I'm taking the Texans to win this in Baltimore. I think it's going to be a 10 Point game to end that one. Your next game in the divisional round is the Packers versus the 49ers live on Fox Saturday at 8.30 p.m. to end out the first slate of divisional round games. Now this game as well, we didn't see a matchup between these two teams uh, that really stood out to us. But if you look back at prior playoff history, what these teams have gone through to get to where they are at and to become the teams they are. Last year, the 49ers beat the Packers 13-10. Prior to that, the game before, 49ers won 37-20. The game before that, the 49ers won. So there's that continuing pattern up until 2002 that the 49ers have beaten the Packers in the playoffs. If they play together. Nine times out of ten. The Packers lose. Uh, and with that. You got to think. There's that mentality of. Hey. I'm going to get back in the winning picture. Jordan Love wants to do this. That whole team. Wants to do this. With that being said. The 49ers are also healthy. Uh, they have a Avenger style offense, as what they've been referred to. And Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuel, George Kittle, Brock Purdy, Christian McCaffrey. That's just your main starting five. That's not counting the linemen who are all star caliber offensive linemen. The defense is an all star caliber defense. So Jordan Love has to come in top tier form. If he's wanting to win this. That defense has to be the same mentality defense we've seen play against the Cowboys. Who shut down Tony Pollard. Who shut down C.D. Lamb. Brandon Cooks. Uh, there's a ton of stuff the Packers have to bring from the previous game to Santa Clara to beat the 49ers. With that being said, the 49ers are the team predicted to win on this one and i'm gonna ride with that i say the 49ers win but i say they win by seven or less to take it to 
the conference round of the National Football Playoffs. Sunday, 3 p.m. from Detroit, the Lions host their second playoff game in 30 years. Jared Goff and that offense showed exactly why they should be there, why exactly a rebuild never hurts a team when it comes to the football league. And that goes for any sport. Um, Jared Goff, Amon Ross St. Brown, Sam Laporta, uh, Montgomery, Jamari Gibbs. It goes on. Um, Aiden Hutchinson. That defense is strong. That offense is strong. Everyone's healthy. Everyone's ready. Uh, so we got to see how that one turns out. And then, of course, on the Buccaneers side, you you got Baker, Mike Evans, White. That team is red hot, as we've seen uh, this past Monday. So these teams are going to have the closest game, in our opinion, when it comes to who wins or who goes home, I, I want to say that in Detroit, you're going to see a very high-scoring game. It's going to be back and forth until the very end. But I think Jared Goff will sneak out of Detroit with another win by three points. With that, our final NFL Divisional Round game, you have the... Chiefs versus the Bills. Uh, they have the most controversial back and forth rivalry that we can think of when it comes to the playoffs as of recent. When we say that, you have got to look back at last year's playoff run with the Bills and the Chiefs due to the fact that at the end of that game, there was a overtime score and when it goes into overtimes there is only one person that can have the ball if they score a touchdown if the other team kicked the field goal they would have got a chance so the Chiefs got the ball tied at 36-36 they went down hit Kelsey game winning touchdown the Bills believe that they should have had a chance And due to that, now there is a rule in the National Football League that in the playoffs, if it goes to overtime, both teams must have possession, even if the other team scores, to make it even. Great rule. Uh, I do not think that's a bad thing. I think that's a great thing coming into this. Um, These teams uh, did not play a lot in the regular season either this year. So that's another great thing we're going to see. Another team that's going to be fresh. Uh, They both had cold weather games. They're both prepared for it to be 16 degrees in Buffalo on Sunday. And with that being said, with this being the 630 game, we are going to take the Buffalo Bills to finally get their win and take it to the house to play the conference game finally to go to the Super Bowl with that being said that is our breakdown predictions and evaluations of each game who we think is going to win of course as always hit that like subscribe to the channel if you enjoy sports all around and share it with your friends and family until next time sports fans we're over and out